Hey everybody, it's your bug loving friend Mosquito here, and this might be a rough day for my video demonstration of my game Splat. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. My state of the art, technologically advanced bug catchers are really Tupperware from my mom's pantry. And see, we're going on a picnic later today, and when she discovered that all our Tupperware was gone, she wasn't too happy. So, I've been working on a solution to use something else to catch the bugs. So far, it's not really worked. I tried books. Oh, where is it? Ew. I also tried using some of my mom's shirts. If anything, I've been getting a good workout running from my mom. <phone rings> Who's B Toll? Oh, it's my cousin Brandon. Hey, maybe he can come over and be my bug containers. <phone rings> oh, he said yes. I didn't even text him back. Oh well, that's great. Now we can go catch. I'm here with my cousin Beetle and we're gonna catch some bugs. Oh, I think I see some movement. You know what that means? Gotta catch them all! Entirely. Wow, that's so brave that you just catch the bugs in your hands like that. Uh, it's really nothing. As long as it's not a spider. I absolutely hate spiders. Oh. What? It's a spider. Uh. Oh! Oh, don't worry, y'all. I got it. Here, let me get my bug head out and look up some facts. Let's see. Spiders have eight legs, more than two eyes, and they eat bugs. That's right, they eat bugs. Spiders are predators, which means they are hunters. It kind of reminds me how the devil traps us in his web, and he uses temptation to trap us. But there's a lot of ways we can avoid these webs, and that's what you're going to learn about in your lesson today. It's going to be amazing. Well, before I go, I guess I should at least try to eat the spider. Well, uh, what? Oh, sorry. My mom's calling me. i uh, got to run. I guess I'll eat the spider next time, or never. See you later. Good morning boys and girls, this is Ms. Cynthia. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going to continue on our uh, series bugs and this is the fifth lesson and we're going to talk about spiders or relate our relationship with Christ and our walk with God um, to spiders. And so the story this week, the Bible story this week is found in the book of Matthew chapter 4. And so this is the story um, or it is a story about what happened to Jesus, you know. So Jesus went off by himself into the wilderness to pray and fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And so boys and girls, fasting means that he didn't eat. So that means that Jesus didn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. And so can you imagine not eating anything for 40 days? You know, that's pretty incredible, right? Um, I'm sure... I'm sure Jesus was extremely hungry and I'm pretty sure we'd be, you and I would be hungry by like, you know, that night, if we fasted the whole day, we'd be hungry by nighttime, right? Much less uh, 40 days. And so um, Jesus was there in the wilderness and guess who shows up? None other than the devil himself, you know? And so he came to try and tempt Jesus. And so, he approached Jesus and he said to him, Jesus, if you are the son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. And so he was tempting Jesus because he knew that he hadn't eaten all day, right? Or, I mean, I don't know at what point he showed up, you know, how many days it had passed, but he was tempting Jesus with, with uh, turning things into bread because Jesus, because 
uh, the devil, Satan, knew that Jesus had that kind of power, right? But guess what? Jesus told him, no. The scripture says that people need more than bread to live, right? They need more than bread um, for for life, to, to be alive. And so um, the scripture also says that they must feed on every word of God. You know, so Jesus said, no, people need more than uh, than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. And that means, boys and girls, that when you feed yourself the word of God, that means that you're reading the Bible, right? Because every word that is written there is um, is the word of God, right? And so that was pretty, uh, pretty smart of Jesus, you know? Uh, he went straight to the scripture, straight to the word of God and told Satan, God's word. He spoke to Satan and um, said God spoke God's word to him, you know. And so then, boys and girls, um, the devil took uh, took Jesus to Jerusalem and he took him to the highest temple. And, and he said to Jesus, you know, if you are the son of God, jump off. So he took him like to the highest temple and he was telling Jesus to just jump off. Right, because surely, if he's the son of God, then he's not going to get hurt, and nothing's going to happen to him, right? And so, um, boys and girls, Jesus responded. The scripture also says, you know, Jesus responded to the devil as you know the devil said to jump off of you know the highest temple. He said, um, the scripture also says, do not test the Lord your God. And boys and girls. Once again, once again, um, you know, Jesus used God's word. He used the scripture um, against Satan, right? Because he was tempting him. And he knew, um, he knew exactly what the word of God said. And he reminded the devil that God shouldn't be tempted, that we shouldn't tempt God by doing, um, you know, just silly well i mean that's not silly kind of dumb or kind of unsmart you know things um, like jumping off of a building right we shouldn't really say okay god if if you love me or if you or if you're really god you know uh save me from hurting myself when i jump off this building that is just not right that's not correct thinking boys and girls um but the devil was you know trying to tempt jesus into into doing that you know and so um, next, you know, the devil took, uh, took him to the peak of a very high mountain, you know, probably like the highest mountain back then, right? And he took him to, to the peak of a very high mountain and he showed him, um, all the nations of the world. So kind of like, if you think, if you've seen the movie Lion King and, um, when the daddy Lion King and, and Simba are like at the peak of the mountain and then they're looking out into, um, all the land that they kind of um, are over, you know, as far as like the sun could see, right? So that's kind of what the devil, you know, did to, to Jesus. He took him to the highest mountain and he said, look at all of that. All of that could be yours, you know? Um, but all you have to do, you know, he said, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it all to you. Um, all you have to do is kneel down and worship me, you know? And so we all know that God is the only one that we should praise, right? And worship and kneel down and bow down to. And so um, Jesus said, Jesus, uh, he told Satan, you know, get out of here, Satan. For the scripture says, once again, boys and girls, Jesus spoke scripture to Satan. He said, for the scripture says, you must worship the Lord, your God, serve only him, you know? And so, uh. Boys and girls, Jesus, with this, Jesus hits the devil um, with the word of God, you know. And, you know, the word of God says that the that the Bible, that the word of God is like a double-edged sword, right? And so it pierces, it pierces. And so I mean, that's exactly what um, what Jesus did with God's word, right? He, uh, he beat the devil with it. And so the Bible tells us, boys and girls, um, that right there and then, like almost immediately or instantly, right there and then, the devil went away because he knew that he could no longer tempt Jesus. He knew that Jesus knows the word of God and that um, 
you know, and you know what? Even the devil knows the word of God, boys and girls. But um, of course, he doesn't obey it, right? But even he knows the word of God. And if you use the word of God, if Jesus used um, the word of God against the devil, boys and girls, to defeat him, then boys and girls, we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing. You know, let's go over our power verse. Resist the devil and he will free, um, not free, flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4, 7. Okay, our power verse. Resist the devil and he will free, flee from you, James 4, 7. And so today, boys and girls, uh, we're learning about staying alert. Staying alert means kind of like, okay, looking at your surroundings, uh, making sure, keeping yourself safe, right? So staying alert at everything that happens around you. So we're going to stay alert and uh, we're going to watch out for traps from the devil. Okay. So if he tried to trap Jesus, boys and girls, who's, who's almighty and, and you know, the son of God, then boys and girls, for sure, for sure, for sure, no doubt that he's going to try to trap us, right? He's going to trap, you know, try to trap you, me, um, everybody in this world, you know? And so we must avoid Satan's web of temptation, boys and girls. Notice that I said the word web. And so that's how the spider comes in, right? And so um, have you ever accidentally walked into a spider web? They're kind of, I mean, they're kind of like invisible, right? When you're walking and all of a sudden you, you walk into it and you don't even know it's there. And so um, when you walk into it, you know, you feel that it's sticking. You try to get it like out of your face and it's kind of like sticking to you. You can't even see it. You know, you don't know where it, you know, where it came from or where it is so you can take it off. And so it gets all over your hair and, you know, on your clothes and it just won't come off, you know? And so boys and girls, do you ever wonder, um why it's so sticky you know why the webs are so sticky well you know it's probably because you know um if you didn't know you know spiders uh, use webs to catch an insect right and so once an, an insect hits it then it's so sticky that even if they fly or crawl or you know they can't and the more they move the more they wrap themselves in it or the more they trap themselves right and they they just can never get out and they just stay there and die right and so um, then once they're stuck there, you know, in the, in the spider web, because it's all sticky, you know, um, the spider swoops in and eats the insects, right? And so boys and girls, we can kind of think of, of our enemy, the devil. Um, he kind of works in the same way. You know, um, he wants to trap us. He wants to trap us into, you know, and lead us into, into sin. And so um, the Bible tells us, that our enemy, the devil, has only three things on his mind. To steal, steal our innocence, you know, um, to kill, to kill our hopes and our dreams, and to destroy, dis you know, destroy our future. Just pretty much all he wants to do is make a mess out of our lives, you know, and, and, and make us fail in our walk with Christ and eventually um, just give up living for God, right? That's all he wants us to do. So he wants to trap us into doing that. And so um, he tries to set a trap for us and try to get us to sin. And so he knows, boys and girls, he knows that sin is, is something that God just hates. Hates is a really strong word, boys and girls, but yeah, God hates sin. He can't be close to it. He can't even be part of it, you know, because he's so holy and so pure that, you know, God hates sin. And so um, the devil, you know, he tries to kind of make a web you kind of like can imagine you know he tries to make a web of temptation to uh to try to trap us right and so um not only does he want to trap us boys and girls but um he knows how to trap us right he knows uh he knows what we want you know or or he knows the things that we are weak um where our weaknesses you know and he knows that we're human and he knows that sometimes we just think with our head you know, and we think that that things are right, but we don't ask God and we don't pray about it, you know, and um, boys and girls, he's been watching us our entire life and he knows what our weaknesses are, you know, and so um, he's seen every time that we mess up, you know, he takes a note of it, you know, every time that we mess up, we do something wrong or, or you know, when we fall into sin, 
you know, he takes a note of it and he's like, oh, this person is easily trapped or this person is easily tempted by, you know, by stealing or by, um, I don't know, by being mean or rude or, um, he just takes a note of every time that we mess up, he takes a note of it so that he can bring it back up again. And so if you can think of a mouse trap, right? We can think of a, of a devil's trap also like a mouse trap. And so if you haven't seen a mouse trap, boys and girls, uh, maybe you can Google it, right? You can Google like mouse traps. So it's those little things like that that kind of snap. You know, you put a little bit, a little piece of cheese on it, and then um, you know, because we put cheese because that's what we think the mouse likes, right? We don't put like chicken on there or um, I don't know cookie dough, or we put cheese because that's what we think the mouse likes, right? Everybody thinks you know that um, mice like cheese, so that's what we put on the trap. And so, um, you know, um, we know that if we put that on there, the mouse is going to fall right into that trap, right? And so, because it's the mouse's uh, weakness. And so, maybe uh, your weakness is is lying, you know? Or maybe you lie because uh, you want people to think that you're cool. And so, you make up lies about things that you do or things that you have or, you know, places that you've been. And then, um, so maybe your weakness is watching bad stuff on TV, you know, just um, like, I know a lot of you kind of, you know, go to YouTube and watch videos, or maybe you like uh, watching movies or TV shows that aren't really, you know, good for your age, you know? And so uh, maybe, maybe that's your weakness. I don't know. I don't know what your weakness is, boys and girls. Only you know, right? Um, and so maybe your weakness is hanging around with the bad crowd, right? hanging around with the with the people that kind of like dare dare you to do bad things and um dare you to like maybe um just do kind of things that put you in danger or put others in danger i don't know boys and girls you're the only one that knows right um what your weakness is and so boys and girls um whatever your weakness is you know the devil is gonna try to um to use that against you the devil is gonna try to use that to tempt you and to kind of like lure you in into into doing that into falling for it every single time right and so boys and girls um you know just like the cheese on the mousetrap um you know the devil will put uh the most temp like the most most of the things that we are weak you know that uh, we show weakness in you know like lying or cheating or things like that that we like do constantly and we find ourselves asking God for forgiveness constantly about doing that. Um, you know, that's what he's going to try to trap us with. That's what he gonna, That's what he's going to use. And so, boys and girls, you might be thinking, well, uh, you know, that's kind of depressing. The devil wants to trap me and he knows exactly, you know, uh, he knows exactly what, he, what to use, you know, to make me fall into the trap. So what's the use of fighting it? You know, I'm just going to, you know, give in and, and just fall into the trap boys and girls no don't do that you know there's there's great news there's great news for you boys and girls about about help that comes our way right you know the devil can't trap us you know you know why boys and girls because uh even though uh, he really wants to trap us you know that's like his biggest his biggest desire his biggest you know job on this earth to trap us and to make us walk away from god you know um he can't trap us as long as we stay alert and aware, you know, of his web of temptation. When you see that temptation coming, you got to run away from it, boys and girls. You got to say, no, I can't do that. I can't say that. I can't think that, right? Um, and so um, all you have to do, boys and girls, is just like Jesus, speak the word of God, right? Whenever you feel tempted, just speak the word of God, boys and girls. And... Um, you know, the devil's going to flee from you, just like he fled from Jesus, right? And so, boys and girls, let's go over our power verse today so that you can remember to flee, you know, to make the devil flee from you, right? So it's found, remember, in um, James 4, 7. And the word of God says this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So, boys and girls, my prayer today is that, that you resist temptation, boys and girls. 
that uh, you resist his web of temptation that he's kind of made and laid out for you nicely, you know? And so um, for those of you that have fallen into the web, that are trapped in the web, you know, I pray that um, that you uh, that you're set free, that God helps you not do those things again and not fall into temptation over and over, right? But that he sets you free, boys and girls. And so um, I pray that he gives you strength to resist temptation. I pray that he brings his word into your heart and into your mind every time that you're tempted so that you can speak his word, right? And, um, and make the, uh, the devil flee from you. So boys and girls, I love you guys. And um, I can't wait to see you and have a good rest of the week.